regulated. No regulated. No regulated. wrong with him. <laughs> with him. I got shot in the, shot in the eye messing with Timothy. You oh, serious? Oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, man. Yeah, right, I told him right. my story and whatnot. He was wondering about my eye. <laughs> so when I was in the car with you, when you got a shot, <laughs> being nosy. <laughs> when the bank has never been robbed, that's why we're going to rob it. Every time I'm in the street, I hear, yeah, 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 yeah. down. Where you from? You got to move. Where you go? Where you from? Where you down, Marseille? Oh, my. This man city, I run. You know what this means? It means I am a member of a gang. Only we have badges. Let's do it, let's do it, man. So, Gerard, let's talk about it, man. Uh, one thing I noticed about this uh, film is a lot about family. I hear y'all keep saying family, family, family. Mm -hmm. You lose your family mm -hmm. inside of uh, the film. Mm -hmm. Now, is it because you love being a cop more, or do you love your family more? I it feel like um, I couldn't Listen, really I, I think Big Nick, yeah, he loves his family. He still loves his wife. He loves his kids. He just doesn't really know how to do it. You know, he was never really a great father to begin with. And and the more he gets into his major crimes, he deals with a lot of kind of pretty awful situations. It, it, he's out the house you know, 60, 70 hours at a time. And uh, yeah, it takes takes you away. And it's, I think it's a very addictive, engrossing, involving thing that he does. And and the more he gets into it, just the more it takes him away from being that family. consistent, loving father at home. Well, yeah. Flip side, you look like a great father in the film. <laughs> you know, it's this uh, viral yeah. clip going out about the scene with you and your daughter. Right. And but when this, they, you always talk about having a daughter, too. It's interesting because usually when you see heist films, you don't see their families. Right. You know, that's the, it's a big, one of the big differences that separates this film from The Town or, or from Heat or some of those films. But you see me with a, a family that I, de that I developed as a cover that I felt like would be allow me to be invisible in plain sight. And I wasn't really assessing how much. Because we've got away with robbery so often, prior to Merman getting himself incarcerated, I looked at it like it, it was just another day at the job. We would get away with it again like we did those other times and not necessarily assessing what happens if it doesn't work out. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's been the team and the, 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 like if you have people with you on a journey where you've experienced being in war with the person mm -hmm. and then you come back to society and everyone else was just going to work and just living their regular day, mm -hmm. they, they don't necessarily have compassion or understanding of what that journey has been like. And that's where the, the, the characters meet with Ensign and Merman. Mm -hmm. Now, both of y'all have something to lose, and that is your family inside of this. What, what is the psyche of somebody that um, uh, is a bank robber, but you, you got you got your your, your, uh, your your wife, your daughter? You could it could go up in smoke just it, like that. But you make it you make it for them, like you make it with. How do they benefit from what you've got from the robber? The money from the robber, you, you're securing their comfort moving forward instead of it being you being conscious of what happens when it doesn't go right. Mm -hmm. You know, because having the, the, the ability to execute it the right way would make you feel secure about going to do it. Mm -hmm. Not like in, it's to their benefit at that point. Like, because we've robbed banks several times prior to this and got away with it. We were dealing with guys that are on, on the extreme edge, like the, the, the most brilliant, dedicated bank robbers and the most brilliant dedicated cops. And I think that somewhere along the line, they kind of learn to put their family out of it, you know? Right. They're so about solving this case or bringing down the Federal Reserve that, you know, sadly, they don't think enough about their wives or their kids because mm -hmm. it's all about winning. His character, mm -hmm. Big Nick, points out five different jobs that took place mm -hmm. that were done so sophisticated that it had to be the same crew. Mm -hmm. And the, the sophistication of the actual how it's being executed is what makes us feel like we can do it any day now. Is he the bad guy to you, and is he the bad guy to you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a level of respect. You know, they, they, I like that this feels like warriors stepping out onto the battlefield. You know, we know what this is about. And when we're there, it's we like to be challenged. Right. So the more they're bringing up their game, the more we're bringing up our game. And there's, you know, the tipping the hat to each other. But without a doubt, they're the bad guys, and they have to go. And he has that syndrome that law enforcement happens to them at points because they're not usually uh, compensated risk versus reward. 
because they put their life on the line a lot. The vested status connected to being law enforcement, they exercise at points. You see what I'm saying? It's like they at the light, you see the light's red, and they just decide to ride through the light with no call. It's saying, I'm the law. Who you gonna call on me? That's I'm right. right. Thank, uh, you man, like, Thank you, guys. Thank you. Let's go. Yeah, All right. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. Pablo, let's yes, do sir. it, man. You mm -hmm. know, um, quitting while you ahead is not the same as quitting. Uh -huh. You know, what is what are you fighting for? Why do you get out? You, you already got some paper. Why <laughs> put yourself in that position again, man? Uh, you know, I think Merriman's a bit of a nihilist, you know. He uh, he wants to pull off the impossible crime. If he's going to get back into it, it has to be something big. It has mm -hmm. to be something impressive. Mm -hmm. I think there's a feeling of... Um, if I'm gonna do it, let's make it. Let's make it the best thing possible. And if it doesn't work out, then I would rather die than uh, than go down, you know, mm -hmm. or go back to jail. Mm -hmm. So I think he's prepared from the very beginning to uh, to lose his life. Wow, wow. And now O'Shea, yeah. you're, you're a very complex character inside of this movie. Yeah. You take a lot of big risk. Uh -huh. I mean, you, you're in a lot of compromising situations. <laughs> almost crapped out a couple times. <laughs> oh, come on, it was almost over for you, yeah, dog. Yeah, yeah. I mean, w was it all worth it? Uh, you know, I like to think uh, as long as it's a high reward and low risk, it should it should be fine. But that's not Donnie's case. You know, mm -hmm. Donnie go through it a bit, and you know it, he's definitely my most complex character I've ever had to uh, deal with in my short ass career. But it's it's, it's definitely a, a fun challenge. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, I just like to think of him as a guy who's just trying to keep his head on his shoulders, mm -hmm. caught in a rock in a hard place. You know, I just want to bartend. Mm -hmm. My homie Marcus is the one who brings me into this crew with mm -hmm. these these complex heists, and we all see what happened to him. And after that, I'm, I'm kind of just left to the sharks there. So Donnie, I feel, is the most relatable character. And uh, you see the film, you see how it turn out for poor Donnie. You're, you're always <laughs> uh, uh, aware of your surroundings. Yeah, you now, gotta be. Now, how, 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 how close is that to who you really are? And whatnot, or do you learn some new things about yourself? No, no, that's, uh, that, I think that's what helped me got the role, uh, get the role, is, uh, when uh, when I was doing straight out of Compton, you know, my father has always taught me to, to play chess. You know, mm -hmm. make sure you see see everybody face in a room. You know, kind of right. map out your surroundings. Yeah. And you know that bit is within Donnie Wilson, and uh, he take it a little bit further than I do. <laughs> Why do you trust him? Oh, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> He's smart. I don't trust nobody. Yeah, you don't yeah. trust nobody. I don't trust yeah. nobody. Them tall people don't trust nobody. Bro. But I mean, <laughs> if if you're talking about, uh, there's just so little we can talk about. And I, I, yeah, 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 yeah. Y'all yeah. done gave away a couple of spoilers already. <laughs> I, don't I, don't know. Know. I don't know what you're talking you about. You the there, bro. I don't know what you're talking you about. You brought bro. us right to the edge. You made us jump. <laughs> yeah, I don't Please think. Please don't stop the music. <laughs> uh, come on. Come on, let's do Come it. Come on. <laughs> I don't think Merriman trusts anybody, honestly. I think he's very he's very tactical. He's playing the game uh, as carefully as he can. can um, but he's also taking uh, information from anywhere that he can in order to um, get the best outcome possible. He just may or may not end up uh, winning the chess game. I can dig it. Man, I really I mean? appreciate you guys.